he approached the builder and asked him if he could use him. Um, he explained his experience, the places where he had worked, and without a moment of hesitation, the builder told my dad, you can change and get started right away. But my father hastened to explain that he would not be able to work on Saturday because Saturday is his holy day in which he wanted to honor the Savior. Now, the builder became sarcastic. Did you come looking for a job or for vacation? If you are not interested to work, why don't you get out of this place? My father was a big man, bigger than me. You know what? He broke down in tears. He said, sir, I did not come looking for vacation. Our family is starving. For the last six months, everybody has treated me like you. We have no food and no money. I plead with you to give me the chance. All what I want to do is to honor the Savior on the Sabbath. I'm prepared to work on Sunday, to work at night, to give up vacation time. I'll do anything that it takes to prove myself. Give me a chance. You know what? That builder was touched to see a big man like my dad crying for wanting to honor the Savior on the Sabbath in a country like Italy where 95% of the Catholic only go to church three times in their life when they're hatched. Matched, dispatched. You know what that means? <laughs> when they are baptized, married, and buried. Those are the three trips they make to church. And here was my dad crying for wanting to honor the Savior every week on the Sabbath. But somehow that builder was touched. And you know what he told my dad? Well, why don't you change and get started? And let's see what is going to happen. You know what happened? For the next 50 years, my father never lost a day of work in the city of Rome. Apparently, the Lord was testing his faith. Isn't it so? And when he proved to be faithful, obviously, he was rewarded. The Sabbath became a testing truth in my own youth. I grew up in Rome at a time when Saturday was a school day. And I remember that some of the Adventist family did not want to go through the trouble of having to justify the absences of having the children expelled from school. And so many of the families sent their children to school on Saturday. But my parents were determined that we would be faithful to God in honoring his holy Sabbath day. And you know what I remember? I remember the principal of the secondary school in Piazza Mazzini, that is the name of the square where the school was located, who would tell my wife, my, not my wife, my mom, that if I would be absent for three consecutive Saturday without medical excuse, I would be expelled. And you know what my mommy did? She took me to the family doctor every week. And the doctor was very helpful. He wrote a very funny medical excuse saying that Samuele Bacchiocchi on such and such a Saturday was psychologicamente incapacitato. What does it mean? <laughs> Psychologically incapacitated. My mind was working fine during the week. But when Saturday came, it, my brain snapped out. It went out of order. And the principal accepted it because it had been prepared by a doctor, it was an official medical excuse. I also remember the problem I had with a Catholic priest that came twice a week, right there in the public school, they still do it today, by the way, to teach us Il Catechismo Catolico, the Catholic Catechism. When he heard that I was not a Catholic, Protestante, Protestante Adventista, Adventist Protestant, which in his mind was the worst possible breed of Protestantism. You know what he did? He told the class, Sam Bakyuki sitting down there is a Protestant heretic or heretical Protestant. Keep away from him. Keep away from him. You know why I remember it? Whenever I try to, uh, try to approach my friends to strike conversation with them, they would say, stay lontano, keep away from us, keep away from us. Tu sei un heretico, you are a heretic. Tu sei un judeo, you are a Jew. They did not want to talk with me. When you are a teenager, you want to be accepted by your friends. Isn't it true? I was heartbroken. Many times I went home crying. Mama, Papa, don't send me to school anymore. Everybody hates me at school. I don't want to go to school anymore. I remember my father, godly man, dignified man. He would look me straight into my eyes and say, Samuele, you stand up. 
for what you know to be God's truth. God will honor your commitment. This is the challenge I like to pass on to all of us, that if we stand up, or what we know to be God's truth. Sometimes we may have to suffer ridicule, rejection, persecution, but ultimately the Lord will honor our commitment. Because of all of this problem of ridicule, rejection, persecution, I started dreaming. While I was still a teenager, 14, 15, 16 years old, I was dreaming already that one day, if the Lord would give me the opportunity, I said, I want to investigate which is God's holy day and what it should mean to our Christian life today. I felt that if I had to suffer, I wanted to suffer for the sake of biblical truth, not a denominational tradition. And my dream came true on July 1977, when I stood inside the Pontifical Gregorian University Press, watching my doctoral dissertation rolling off the Vatican Press with their official stem. You see the papal tiara and the cross key and the official imprimatur. Folks, this is the only book that has ever been published by the Vatican, by Vatican Press, with their official stamp of approval given by two examiners, the rector of the university and the Archbishop of Rome. And let me hasten to say that this book has been a hot potato for the Roman Catholic Church. It has generated far more controversy in the dominant countries of Central and South America that you can imagine. I could show you a newspaper published in this country where they are really denouncing me, like this is from Puerto Rico, El Piloto. The whole center fold of the newspaper is a what shall I say, is a bitter attack against me. They are accusing me, attacking me uh, of being a wolf in sheep clothing, they say. They explain that I use deception to enter study, to have access to the archive and gathering all the material. They felt that all what I did was through deception, by hiding my identity. In other words, I was an Adventist infiltrator inside the Vatican. All of this is total nonsense, absolutely nonsense. They spent months and months and months to process my application because I was the first non-Catholic to apply and they didn't even know what to do with me. So it was a long process. But some of you, <laughs> some of you may be wondering, Dr. Bakioki, by the way, you are free to call me Brother Sam. Wherever I go, I tell people that Bakioki is too complicated to worry about. One thing I like about America, you always like to simplify things. So simplify my name and call me Brother Sam. Brother Sam, what made you decide to study at the Gregoriana? This is the entrance there to the university. After all, the Gregoriana is a leading Jesuit university, you know. It is the Alma Mater. It's the university that was founded by Ignatius of Loyola, the very founder of the Jesuit movement. It's the university that has been the Alma Mater of all the popes, cardinal, bishop of the Roman Catholic Church. Even this present pope is an alumnus you know, a, a graduate of the Gregoriana. Why did I go to study there? The answer is rather simple. I told you already that the Sabbath has been a testing truth in my life, that I was dreaming that the Lord may give me the chance someday to do an in-depth investigation of the Sabbath Sunday question. In fact, let me tell you something. As I went through the Adventist Academy in Florence, four years, Adventist College at Newburgh, four years, Adventist Seminary here at Andrews, four years, I must have prepared, written over 20 research projects dealing with theological, historical aspects of the Sabbath. This was a burning question in my heart because I had suffered a lot for Sabbath keeping. So I was hoping that if the Lord would open the door for me to study there, I may have access to the libraries, to the archive, and find documents, documents that should shed light on how the change came about from Sabbath to Sunday in early Christianity. Now, my admission was problematic. Why? I was the first non-Catholic to be admitted. You know why? Until recently, they did not allow non-Catholic. It was only at the Second Vatican Council that was held in Rome from 1962 to 1965 that a provision was made for the separated brethren. Oh, I like that. I used to tease my classmates. I'm so happy. I'm not a heretic anymore. I'm a separated brother. And how can we be separated in Jesus Christ, you know? It was at Vatican II that the provision was made 